So, so today I went to the gym and I feel alright. I'm wearing my binder. I don't know if you can tell or not. Uh, my chest has never been that big, but you can definitely tell that I have one. I don't often wear my binder because, well, I have several reasons. Um, first off, it's a bit too small on me. I should probably just get a new one, but uh, I don't really prioritize my well-being as we all know here. My husband doesn't like it. He's given me a hard time in the past about it and um, that's just some bullshit I rather not have to deal with, to be honest. Uh, third, I have HS. I've done a video about it, how HS and binding do not mix. Um, as far as pain management goes, I am just always in pain and uh, having things smashing up against my armpit region, not so great for um, pain management. So those are the reasons I don't typically um, wear my binder, <clears throat> but here we are. So the video I wanted to do today is on a subject that I have been mulling over been thinking about for a while, but this has been an ongoing problem where I have issues coalescing my thoughts into something coherent that I can express in a succinct way. I've, I've just had issues with that for years now, and with this topic it's a little nuanced and difficult to put into words already. I, in the efforts to try to get my thoughts together, I wrote this um, freeform essay kind of journal entry. So I'm going to read it with the hopes that it'll maybe knock some things loose. Um, if anything, it'll just get my point across a bit, introduce the, the topic itself. Um, I tend to think that, uh, like, speaking aloud, I just... I'm not as good. I'm a, I'm a lot better on the page. Um, so if you think I'm eloquent here, you should read the things I say. It's fucking phenomenal. So before I read this, I actually um, probably grew up with a learning disability. Um, I have issues transposing, omitting. Words just sometimes look absolutely foreign to me, just like scribbles. And I was very good growing up at um, hiding that I had very particular issues reading, um, but I had several um, pretty, pretty humiliating instances um, throughout elementary school and middle school um, with popcorn reading. I just, I hate. But yeah, I absolutely despise reading aloud, um, so without further ado, a touchy subject. Since I can remember, intimacy has been an incredibly difficult obstacle to tackle, and if I'm being honest, something I outwardly avoid. Emotional intimacy has proven to be the biggest burden. It always leaves me feeling as though I'm covered in a sticky film after being touched in places I don't even touch myself. It's irksome, draining, tiresome, and slightly disturbing. Getting close to others isn't something I avoid because of some deep-seated fear of rejection. I'm actually quite used to being accepted and exalted. I avoid intimacy because it is fundamentally unfamiliar and relatively unnecessary. Delving into my social failings and stunted emotional development is a discussion for another day. Much too much to unpack at the moment. However, physical intimacy seems to be a bit more clean-cut or perhaps just easier to broach. Touch is weird. Similarly to emotional intimacy, it is unfamiliar. I grew up not often being touched, and when it did happen, it was not comforting. I've always disliked being touched, which is something my mother caught on to rather quickly during my childhood. She made it her personal mission to make me more accustomed to touch, holding me and rubbing my arms. It wasn't a hug so much as it was a maneuver, a means of systematic desensitization that ignored my agency and involved no before or after care. 
It was an interaction that I disliked, and while it certainly desensitized me to being touched, conditioning me out of cowering or lashing out, it only did so to unwanted touching. Woefully absent from my childhood and adolescence were emotionally reinforcing and non-intrusive touches. I honestly feel as though the only way I can be touched is against my will because the association is that deep. Hugging, while I do it, is weird to me and causes a perceptible amount of dissociation. The concept of cuddling was completely foreign to me until I was an adult and exposed to others' concepts of physical intimacy. On top of having few emotionally reinforcing touches in my childhood, experiencing a litany of traumatic non-consensual touching in my adolescence and adulthood has resulted in an aversion to touch sometimes bordering on phobia. Despite being adverse to touch, I find myself idealizing the experiences I'd like to have. I feel that while I avoid intimacy, it is something, at least on some minute level, that I require to feel actualized. There's a part of me that needs to be touched, and while it's easily slated with small encounters, it is still existent and requires a more concrete experience than my dream world can provide. And I suppose I gravitate to what was absent from my upbringing. And y'all bear with me because it gets douchey. The touch that I crave is not particularly gendered in that I think anyone can provide it, but the energy is distinctly feminine. Sometimes I catch glimpses of my own dreams about it where there's only a ghost of a memory of what actually happened. But the energy lingers like perfume, intoxicating and pungent, almost demanding recognition. In my dreams, I'm never myself, but my consciousness suspended above a faceless individual who I understand to be myself. The experience is somehow in both first and third person simultaneously. And the way that I explain it is uh, the sensations are in first person while the scene itself is in third. This is possibly the product of my chronic dissociation. It's been how my dreams have worked since I was young, but the touch and the energy that accompanies it is almost tangible. It exists in a space between comfort and sensuality, not meant to arouse or appease but to satisfy. It's never quite sexual, but could be if I wanted it to be. Unlike the energy from others that I've experienced, it doesn't take from me or leave me feeling drained. There is no expectation, only warmth and a remarkable softness that contours to my very being. It just fits. It's just right. I don't feel the need to perform when enveloped in this energy, and I feel not quite at home, but comfortable. There is a quiet euphoria to this touch that I find difficult to place, almost as though it is my own, but it's not possible for me to be this soft. On quiet nights, when I've run out of thoughts to torture myself with, I find myself craving this touch. I, I wrote that a few months ago, and <laughs> Diglett actually read it and got uh, pissed off. I find that um, I'm particularly good at rustling his jimmies. It's a um, special talent of mine that I take quite a bit of pride in. You know, all the flowery bullshit aside, um, you know, sometimes I get into a, a mood when, when I wax poetic about desires, about life in general, and, uh, I don't know, become sophomore hours. Definitely does. But all that stuff aside, touch has always been particularly strange to me. Um, though I do feel that I need it. It's not so much something that I want so much as it is a physical need. And that bothers me because I'm a person that likes to be in control of any and all aspects of their being. And that is something that is entirely outside of my control. But as I've said for other things um, regarding my upbringing, regarding how I developed, I, I find that I was not primed, I was not prepared uh, for intimacy, for touches in general, um, because emotionally reinforcing touches were absent from my childhood, and so it makes it difficult to discern consensual versus non-consensual, good versus bad touch 
when there haven't been any touches at all. And it's weird because it's like not having an esophagus but needing to eat and you can't get food without some kind of intervention. You need the feeding tube and I don't know what that is for me as far as intimacy goes and I don't know how much I care to find that out to be honest. For me, intimacy with others is, is foreign. I'm not a person who is um, easily overtaken by, by lust, I guess. So when I'm around other people who are horny, for lack of a better word, and projecting that energy onto me, it is, well, first off, it's foreign to me. But second off, it's unnerving. And I'm definitely projecting some of my more traumatic experiences, some of the less positive experiences I've had with other people. But that knowledge doesn't really change the feeling of it being threatening. And it does feel inherently threatening when you are with a person who is kind of riding this wave of arousal that has been kind of taken over. It's almost like being trapped in a room with a zombie. This creature is going to consume me and they can't control it. That's, that's how it feels for me. And especially with men, because of my past experiences, and also because I feel like, I mean, I don't want to speak for all people's experiences, but I feel that men kind of experience arousal a bit more intensely. Um, it's definitely different, I feel, for men. But, I mean, across the board, it's always been weird for me, um, whether it's from a man, a woman, another non-binary, genderqueer person. It's, it's just so foreign. And talking about this is just fucking messy. It's hard for me to, to put the thoughts together. And I thought that maybe reading that entry would knock some things loose, but no luck. We'll have to put a pin in this one, guys. I'll, um, I'll come back to it, though, because I think it is a very interesting thing to delve into. Um, but at the moment, you know, the thoughts are just not coming for me. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask because sometimes I get so caught up in my own mind that I don't take other people's perspectives into account. And I mean, for me, this is just the way that it is. And if I know what other people are thinking, what other people are wondering about, then I can express these thoughts that I'm just used to having um, in a way that can be understood. But at the moment, <laughs> uh, it's just not going to happen. I will talk to you guys later.